Watch this rocket launch closely. In particular, watch the rocket come back down. Here it is again in slow motion. It's a little hard to see, so we'll do our best to zoom in. Note how the rocket's body is coming back down tail first, remaining vertical. When you launch a model rocket, you want it to fly up with the nose first. This means the rocket has to be aerodynamically stable. We'll talk more about that later. Normally, at the peak of a model rocket's flight, an injection charge ejects the nose cone, which remains tethered to the rocket's body, and deploys a parachute. The entire assembly then falls gently back to the Earth, and you don't really have to worry about the rocket's orientation. Compare this to reusable rockets made by companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX that land vertically without using a parachute. Instead, they use a combination of thrusters and fins to slow down and remain upright. This makes an interesting challenge for a science project. Can you modify a model rocket to land vertically? To do this, first you'll need to understand a little bit of rocket science. Let's switch over to looking at a model rocket up close to talk about some of the physics. The first concept you'll need to understand is center of mass. A rocket's mass is distributed throughout the entire rocket, and gravity individually pulls down on each one of these little bits of mass. However, when using physics to predict how an object will move, we can treat gravity like it's a point force, a single force that acts on a single point on the object. This point, called the center of mass, is the average location of all of the rocket's mass. You can find it by trying to balance the rocket on your fingertip. If you have the rocket too far to one side, then it will fall very quickly. But if you can get the center of mass aligned above your fingertip, you should be able to balance it. It's difficult to get this perfect, and the rocket might still rotate slowly, but you should be able to get pretty close. How mass is distributed throughout the rocket affects the location of the center of mass. For example, model rocket engines are pretty heavy, so when you put one in towards the back of the rocket, that's going to shift the center of mass towards the back. Conversely, nose cones are usually hollow and pretty light, so if you pack some weight into the nose cone, that's going to shift the center of mass towards the front. Model rocket engines also expel propellant as they burn, meaning the engine gets lighter and the center of mass of the entire rocket shifts as the rocket flies. That's it for center of mass, next we need to talk about center of pressure. Air pressure acts along the entire surface of a rocket. Just like we can with gravity and center of mass, we can treat the resulting force from that air pressure as if it acts on a single point, the center of pressure. Instead of depending on the mass distribution, the center of pressure depends on a rocket's surface area distribution. The fins don't add a lot of mass, but they add a lot of surface area and help bring the center of pressure towards the back of the rocket. This is what helps keep the rocket stable when it flies. Ideally, your rocket would just fly straight up. But in reality, it's going to wobble a little bit and rotate about its center of mass, represented by me pinching the rocket with my left hand here. If the center of pressure is behind the center of mass, then if the rocket tilts off course, the aerodynamic forces acting on the rocket, represented by me pushing on the rocket with my right finger here, are going to cause the rocket to rotate back in the vertical direction so it gets back on course and continues to fly straight. If the center of pressure is in front of the center of mass, then when the rocket tilts off course, the aerodynamic forces acting on it are going to make that rotation worse and keep pushing it so it continues to rotate and crashes. So to summarize, for a vertically flying rocket to be passively stable, meaning it does not require any active control system to stay upright, the center of mass needs to be above or in front of the center of pressure. There's a simple experiment you can do to test a model rocket's aerodynamic stability without launching it and using up an engine. First, tie a string around the rocket's center of mass. Do your best to slide the string back and forth to get the rocket balanced, and then tape it in place so it doesn't move around during the experiment. Next, go outside to an area free from obstructions and twirl the rocket around on the string. Assuming you have tied the string to the center of mass and the rocket's design is stable, it should fly nose first. Now, here's the big challenge for this project. Can you design a rocket that flies normally or nose first initially, but reverses direction and flies tail first after the engine burns out and the nose cone ejects? To do this, you'll need to reverse the rocket's aerodynamic stability. For it to come back down tail first, you'll want the center of pressure above the center of mass. There's no single right or wrong way to do this, but here are some ideas. On the left here, we have an unmodified model rocket made using the instructions and parts that came in the kit. 
On the right here, we have a modified version with a few changes. First, I trimmed down the tail fins to make them smaller. This removes surface area from the back of the rocket, shifting the center of pressure towards the front during ascending flight, but not so much that it makes the rocket unstable. Next, I've modified the nose cone to add this shield and added a ring fin to the body of the rocket. This ring fin is blocked by the shield during ascending flight, so it doesn't contribute too much to the center of pressure, but after the nose cone ejects, the ring fin is exposed. So when the rocket comes back down, air can pass through the ring fin, and this helps shift the center of pressure towards the front of the rocket's body. Combined with the shift in center of mass that comes from ejecting the nose cone, these changes are enough to swap the locations of the center of mass and center of pressure. On the way up, the center of pressure is below the center of mass, then after the engine burns out, the nose cone ejects, and the ring fin is exposed. On the way back down, coming tail first, the center of pressure is above the center of mass. So in both configurations, the rocket is stable and remains vertical. There are different methods you could use to accomplish this. For example, packing more weight like modeling clay into the nose cone to have a bigger impact on the shift in the center of mass. Or trying a different fin style, like umbrella style or hinged fins that fold flat against the rocket's body while it's ascending, and then deploy during landing when the air is coming in the opposite direction. Note that if you plan to conduct a live launch of your rocket and not just conduct the string twirl tests, then the National Association of Rocketry Safety Guidelines say that all parts of your rocket must have a recovery system like a parachute or streamers. So you can leave the parachute attached to your nose cone and look up instructions for how to make your own streamers using material like freight paper and attach those to the body of your rocket since they won't affect the aerodynamics as much as a parachute and should still allow you to demonstrate the vertical descent. Another note when conducting your string twirl test to represent backwards or tail first descending flight, in addition to removing the nose cone, you'll want to swap out your new engine for a used one since that will affect the center of mass. If you can't conduct a real flight test to get a used engine, you can have an adult help you safely clamp one into a heavy vise to fire it. If you try this project out yourself, let us know how it goes in the comments. Check out the description for a link to written instructions on our website. And for many more science projects about space exploration and over a thousand projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.